Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 466. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 466 to 471. Hey, in this trick, we need to add every third value, or every fifth, or every 26th value. So our n will start with 3. The long way to do this, of course, would be to use the sum function, alt equals, and then click on the first cell and hold the control key to select cells not next to each other. The problem with this, of course, is it takes a long time, and it, um, could, you could get errors. So we're going to use sum product mod and row in one formula. We'll add every third value for however big the column is. Let's first look at the mod function, equals mod. Now what does mod do? It simply gives you a remainder when doing division. I'm going to use the row function, the row without an argument, an argumentless function. We'll just tell you what row we're in, 1, 2, 3, etc. So we'll say 1, 2, 3, and always divide by this 3. I hit the F4 key to lock it going down across the rows. Control Enter, and then I'll double click and send it down. So obviously, when it gets to row 3 divided by 3, that's 0. Row 6 divided by 3 is 0. We're going to need trues and falses, so with this column still highlighted, active cell, I'll hit F2 and edit this. Convert it from a function delivering a number to a true false equals 0. Now it is a true-false formula. Now over here, oh, you can see we got a true, a true. We're going to use those in our formula. If we can multiply all of these numbers by a bunch of trues and falses, two ranges being multiplied, we could get our total. Sum product does that perfect. The purpose of sum product is to take arrays, multiply them, and then add uh, the values. I'm going to select this range right here. That's A1 to A25. That's the first array, comma. And now, second array, we need to build our true falses and then convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. I'm going to convert those to ones and zeros by using double negative. And we'll simply use our mod function. And instead of uh, using an argumentless uh, row, we'll highlight all of the cells here. That part will deliver the numbers 1 to 25, and we'll take all those. That's the part that makes this an array, comma, and we'll say divide all those numbers by this 3. That, of course, will give us a string of 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And I'm, uh, I don't need to lock that, right? But this is 0s, 1, 2, 3, et cetera. What we really want is that true and false, so we say equals 0. The then close parentheses, you can see that green one there, that green one there, the double negatives will convert them to ones and zeros. The ones and zeros will be multiplied by everything there, and some product will add. Now we can change this to four or five or whatever we want, and our formula will update, all, although this one won't. Now there is a problem with this, and it will just take a slight amendment. Our range just happens to be an A1, A2, A3. But what if it's over here? I mean, the likelihood is it's probably lots of other places besides here. So we'll have to slightly amend this. Now I put it into edit mode, F2, and then copy it. So these relative cell references don't move when I paste it over here. Click here, F2, and then F2 to put it in edit mode and control V. I need to highlight this range here and this range right here to amend this formula. And then I'll uh, um, C315. So they're not the same when you, I, you can see I made an error here. I have this 5 here. Some product delivers a value error when the uh, dimensions of the two arrays are not the same. So that was ha that is what was happening there. Now when I uh, control enter, we have four. That is not always going to work. That just happens to be true here. If I change this to two or five, you can see we get an error. So we need to change this because it will not always deliver the right. Though that's just happenstance because I have such a small range of numbers there. Uh, what we need to do is just change just the number part of our row. Right now it's going from 7 to 31. Well, what about if we do this? All those 7 minus 31s minus 
row of this. Right now, it'll give us a string of 7 minus 7, 8 minus 7, but that's not what we want because it'll start with a 0, so we simply add 1. And that is our amended formula here that will work. And now, no matter what we type in here, we'll always get the same answer. So two different formulas, one if it happens to be in A1 to whatever, or the first row of whatever column, and this one will work everywhere. Uh, in our next video, I'll actually show you how to do the conditional formatting that I was uh, doing here. So if I hit 5, it will work. And again, for conditional formatting, you'll have to have two different formulas for two different situations in that video coming up. See you next video.